Get five coffins ready. Hey everyone, welcome to my guide for Loki. Loki is annoying, but more importantly, he focuses on singling out squishy targets and dealing way, way more damage than they can handle. As a result, he's mostly seen in the jungle, but isn't bad in the solo lane. You just need to pick him when you know there's a target on the enemy team that you can single out. Build-wise, Loki is a guy who loves damage. For the most part, you want to focus on buying as much crazy high damage as possible on Loki. Don't get me wrong, you can go for more of a bang for the buck kind of route with your builds and still deal decent damage, but with Loki, I've always felt the most success when just conceding your early game damage and building purely to eviscerate squishies on the enemy team later on in the match. Relics wise, you just want blinking beads. Loki is an assassin with a capital A, so these relics work perfectly for him. You can go bees and Aegis, but this is really only recommended when the enemy team has two or more squishies who lack movement abilities meaning you don't need to use blink to get in on them. Shard wise, it's mostly just horn shard. Loki's combos are fast, but not too fast. So horn shard is a good in-betweener shard, but claw shard works fine too if you like it more. Loki's passive is super simple. If Loki attacks a target from their back, he will deal percent increased damage. This is a lot like Mercury's passive punch, and one of the reasons for building absolute maximum power form, because the backstab scales with the extra power. It's very simple, but it's a good chance to talk about his funky basic attack chain, which is clearly here to balance all this passive damage. Loki basic attacks once normally, then three times quickly but for only half damage, then a final hit where he deals 1.5 times damage. This basic attack chain is god awful to be honest, but it's for a good reason. With the passive applied, Loki can apply unholy amounts of damage, so this basic attack chain is here to even it out a bit. So as a Loki player, you want to get that first full hit of damage whenever you can. Meaning you have to cancel this chain whenever you can to avoid those weak half hitting attacks. Luckily, Loki can do this with his first ability. Loki becomes stealth and gains movement speed, and is immune to slows while invisible. He can be broken out of this invisibility by any forms of hard CC, and any damage dealt to him will reveal him for a brief moment, although nothing other than hard CC will cancel out his slow immunity, and he can remain invisible for up to 4 seconds. On a completely separate timer, starting when Loki becomes invisible, Loki's next basic attack will apply damage over time, and this effect lasts for 6 seconds. I specify that it's a completely separate timer because Loki will still have access to this damage over time basic attack even if the invisibility is broken by say a stun or a silence. Don't get me wrong, like with most abilities there are objectively correct ways to use it in certain situations, but there are three main ways you want to use the ability. Use it as early as possible purely to cover distance and set yourself up for a blink play or play with one of your other gap closing abilities. Then you have players who use it solely in the midst of their combos as they come out, purely using it for damage as an insane basic attack cancel which, as I mentioned earlier, is crucial for Loki's damage output. Then you have usages of the ability which try to cover both. Go invisible in the midst of a fight but before you've actually started your combo. And now is a very good time to tell you that using any relic like a blink or a purification beads while invisible will immediately reveal you. This method works well when pulled off correctly but requires you to maximize to a T your invisibility duration. I'll get into how later on once we've seen some of his other abilities. So which of these three playstyles is best? Um, hate to say it, but it's the one you like most. Now the best Loki players will know exactly which playstyle to go for at exactly the right time, so let's break down when it's best to use which. Saving your invis solely for damage is best suited for the early and mid game ganks, where you focus on blink comboing anyways and don't need to use your invisibility to close the gap. Plus this ability is extremely loud, so starting off ganks with it is an absolute no go. Even against very easy targets like a Ra, when they hear the invis pop off they're just going to walk away and you're never going to be able to catch back up to them before they get under their tower. How loud the invis is is Loki's main issue while ganking to be honest, it's one of the biggest reasons why blink is a necessity. Using the invis as a pure gap closer is a bit silly then, but it has its uses, especially when it comes to those easy to dive enemies like a Ra or AMC. Gods who can hear the invis from far away but may not always be able to get away from you if you have access to blink and or your ultimate. Then using it somewhere in between is usually when you can either choose to invis when the enemy already knows you're there, then blink and or use your ultimate to begin your combos, or you simply choose to invis to make the enemy team retreat, and then you simply plop your second ability onto them. Speaking of which, Loki's second ability spawns down an unkillable object which can body block enemies in the middle of a huge AoE. This AoE deals damage every 0.5 seconds to enemies inside the AoE, each successful hit reducing the enemy's damage dealt to Loki by 5%. And after 4 successful hits of damage, this damage reduction effect will be capped at 20% and the enemy will have their vision reduced and can be backstabbed from any direction. I can hear you all now. He uh, he does what? Yeah this ability sounds really confusing at first, but don't worry, it's extremely simple in execution. This ability is huge and does damage over time, right? So all you need to do as Loki is just place it decently during your mid combo and remember to body block enemies inside of it for maximum damage as well as getting the backstab passive for free. Keep in mind as well that, just like Loki's first ability, this is a blazing fast basic attack cancel. And for all the damage and bonus backstab damage it can lead to, the most useful thing about it is that it enables you to go 1, basic, 2, basic in rapid succession for wicked high damage. 
One ability which can keep enemies inside of your two and can utilize those backstabs is Loki's third ability. Loki begins channeling and is immune to knockups and deals damage five times over the course of three seconds, each slash slowing enemies, and the final fifth hit deals more damage and slows for more. And as I mentioned, this ability is able to utilize Loki's passive if he hits someone from behind with it, and it does insane amounts of damage if you do so. So one of the most annoying but effective things about Loki rears its head here. You want to run away from Loki's barrage of backstabs, but since you're slowed by this ability you either have to turn and fight him or simply turn around and face him to lower the damage, slowing yourself down in the process if you're on the receiving end. And of course, if you're full comboing them and keep them slowed and body blocked in your two, they're forced to eat that backstab damage no matter what. This is Loki's go-to for most things, clearing waves, clearing camps, or just plain dealing damage to enemy gods. Keep those basic attack cancels I mentioned in mind too though. So now the current combo is blink 1, basic 2, basic 3. Now if only there were an ability you could use to chase with or use as a starter if you don't have access to blink. This is where Loki's ultimate comes into play. Loki becomes CC immune and teleports. If there are any enemies in the AoE he teleports to, they are damaged and crippled. Then Loki winds up for a cone AoE strike in front of himself, and keep in mind he's still able to move his camera and character around while winding up for this strike. When the cone AoE strike fires, he deals much higher damage and stuns any enemies inside the AoE. Now this, obviously, does a ton for Loki, so you really can't afford to misuse it. But on that note, don't forget that this ability can just be used as an escape, and a very good one at that. An instant long range teleport, not many gods can compete with that, even better when you consider its range is long enough to go over most walls. Keep that in the back of your mind while trying to make plays with Blink, but of course, for the most part, you want to use this ability for damage and CC. This ability is excellent as both a combo finisher and combo starter. Generally, you want to use it at the end of combos during the laning phase while you're ganking lanes, primarily starting your ganks with Blink. Your barrage of Blink, 2, and 3 gets the enemies to use their relics and or movement abilities, then you use this ability after those are off of the table to finish them off, typically keeping one of your main three abilities in reserve to work off of your stun from the ultimate afterwards. So you can for instance Blink 1, 3, then chase with your ultimate and save your 2 to finish them off if they're able to get away. Or against enemies who are easy to spook like say Merlin, Blink 1, 2, and then ult and then 3 after he teleports. Then with gods like Ra, you just murder them to death. Then as the game gets later, you want to switch to using this ability reactively during teamfights. You certainly don't want to start fights with it though, and this is where Loki can be his most difficult. Oh, okay, the first few levels are pretty rough too, but one of Loki's biggest downsides is that he really needs his teammates to pull their weight in late game fights. Not only does Loki need to be in close proximity to his enemies to deal damage, he also has a lot of moving parts that he needs to hit. His basic attack cancels, the ticks on his three, all while trying to keep them inside of your two. You can't really do all that if the enemy tanks have free reign just to peel you right off of your targets. On that note though, Loki does play through Aegis extremely well, Aegis being the relic that most squishies buy which allows them to be invulnerable from damage for 1.5 seconds. Loki doesn't care about that, since as I just mentioned, he has a lot of moving parts so he can just stop his combo for 1.5 seconds and then keep comboing after like nothing happened. Again, this is reliant on your teammates actually being a threat to the enemy team, but the final thing you can do for yourself if the enemy tank is sticking to your intended targets like Lou is just try to use the stun on the ultimate on them instead. That might sound like crazy talk, using the most damaging part of the ultimate on a tank, but trust me, once Loki hits a late game he really doesn't need to hit that portion of the ultimate to kill someone, so sometimes it's best to use the ability as a sort of preemptive self peel just before you do your combo. Speaking of which, some combos with Loki. 1, 2, 3, basic attack. Blink basic 2, basic 3, 1 to chase and basic attacks. Blink basic 1, basic 3, and chase with your 2. Blink basic 2, basic 3, and chase with your ult and 1. Ult 2, basic 3, basic and 1 to chase. For ability level, you want your 2 at level 1, your 3 at level 2, and your 1 at level 3. From there you max your 3, your 2, then your 1, leveling the ultimate whenever you can. As for leveling up your 2 or your 1, it's really just a toss up. Just level the one you like more. For me, the 2 dealing damage leads to a better experience overall, whereas leveling the 1 really only counts when you're killing someone. Speaking of killing people, Loki is very good at it. He's as assassin-y as assassins get in Smite, dealing very low to almost no area damage, but having exceedingly good single target damage. Mind you, someone like Susano, Thor, Kali, or especially Mercury will melt you just as fast if not faster, but have superior CC to Loki to boot. But one thing Loki has over those gods is trickiness. When his invisibility is used to its maximum potential, you can never really know what a Loki's gonna do next, since the world becomes his oyster as soon as he puffs into smoke. 
But on that note, that and several other factors make his early game a nightmare as a Loki player. And even though you can learn a lot about assassinating as Loki, he's hard to recommend to new players since his early game is just so horrifically bad. You really do need your teammates to hold the fort until you get your first item. And going against potent early game gods like Awelix, Thanatos, or Thor, who can get the ball rolling in the jungle far more easily than Loki, and can still have a decent late game presence too, means there's a lot of times where the first 15 minutes of a game can just be completely out of your hands. Play your cards right though, especially with the invisibility, and Loki always turns into an absolute menace once his build comes online. And when Loki uses his purification beads and his ultimate correctly, there's times where it feels like there's nothing you could do to stop him from evaporating your backline. On that note, something I rarely touch on but kind of have to in this case is the community's attitude toward Loki. Due to his uh, tricky nature, his reliance on his team doing well, and the fact that he can so efficiently explode enemy life bars, he, um, well, people hate him. And he is definitely annoying to play against whether you're the one dying to Loki or the one trying to stop the Loki from killing your team. So if you're interested in Loki, don't be surprised if you feel singled out by the enemy team or your teammates call you an extra slur or two in the game chat while playing Loki, it just comes with the territory. But Loki is way, way too much fun to let that stop you from trying him out. That's all I have on Loki for now. Thanks for watching.